Hey, church family, this past Sunday was a great day to be able to gather with some of the folks from uh, the congregation and just to give you an update, we met uh, right after the worship time and decided that, you know, in order that we would have 120, at least 120, that's how many the fire marshal will allow us to have in the sanctuary, uh, that we would just uh, have folks call in for reservations. It kind of seems odd, doesn't it, Roger? Yeah. <laughs> Ask people to make a reservation for church. Um, but if you'll call, uh, just call as soon as we have 120 people, uh, we'll get a feel for how many are uh, eager to get back. And so hopefully in June we'll have either two or however many services we need to have. So we're trying to uh, open up slowly and uh, to continue to be safe, but looking forward to having more people. Uh, we had about 50 here this past Sunday and it uh, look good, good to have 120 uh, this coming Sunday. So we invite you to call and make a reservation for your family so we'll know exactly how many people uh, we'll have. I've asked Ron, uh, my, my friend and neighbor and uh, fellow minister, Ron's our, our District 8 uh, missionary and he's coming tonight. I asked Ron if he wouldn't mind just sharing our devotion and uh, giving us a little update on what's going on with the district and uh natchez association just to you know a lot of our folks you know been praying for our um for our district aid and all the different ministries and and i i know you can share and uh before i turn it over to ron though i wanted to to go ahead and and pray and we do have a long prayer list we've had some folks who've lost family members we need to continue to pray for um, and I wanted to, to tonight to really lift up uh, all of our folks who are uh, in the nursing home and those who are homebound and they're not able to come right now and haven't been able to come but let's not forget them and uh, Miss Shirley Boyston, Miss Dot Lindsay, Lizzo Simmons, Carter, uh, Carmen Carter, Miss Johnson, Liz Johnson, Leland Linnell Scoggins, uh, Mr. Ed Toller, you know, Miss Nelda just recently passed away. Uh, we've got homebound folks, uh, you know, Highland Packard, uh, Lloyd Ponder, Miss Dot Robertson, Evelyn Robertson, uh, Jana, Janice Andrus, uh, several others. So, and we've had some folks that just had surgery recently. Tim Murkison, uh, Bill, Billy Garland still recovering. Miss Nancy Murray, uh, Dee Dee Payro. Uh, several that are dealing with cancer, uh, Miss Tanya uh, Conley, and uh, let's continue to, to lift them up as well. So I want to I want to pray and then turn it over to you, Ron. Okay. Lord, thank you. Thank you again for every Wednesday that we can come together in the middle of the week and just uh, pray for our church family and uh, pray for friends, those who are part of uh, families in our of our church and those who've gone through some tough times. We, we do pray a special prayer tonight for our uh, homebound and nursing home members and those who, uh, even this crisis, Lord, um, they've had a hard time with people not even being able to come visit with them. And uh, we lift them up to you and just ask that you would encourage them. Uh, Lord, this list has been long. We've had many who've lost loved ones uh, even Pete, our uh, custodian here at the church, lost a sister last week, uh, Ola Mae Smith, and we pray for Pete and his family. And uh, we continue to lift up Miss Mildred McTire, uh, Rebecca Ward and the loss of her dad, uh, Tina Reagan and the loss of her uncle, uh, Janice Bolton and the loss of her mom, and Hovey and the loss of Miss Beverly, uh, Harold, and we do pray for the Tobers, Lord. Uh, thank you again, Lord, for the way our church has uh, continued to be faithful through all of this crisis. And it's exciting as we come back together, as we begin to worship together again. And uh, we pray that uh, as these weeks progress, Lord, that it'll be more energy and even more excitement as we see more and more people be able to come and, and sing your praise and worship together. Thank you for Ron and his friendship. 
and uh, thank you for his leadership in our district and I pray for uh, him and Lori Lord as they lead and uh, I pray that you'd bless him now as he shares with us in Jesus name amen amen Thank you, Tommy, for this, this opportunity. And uh, people often ask me what we do at District 8 or what is District 8, where are the other seven districts before or however many numbers might be after it. And, and I always tell them we're, we're a unique organization and we're the, the only one I know of in our state or really across uh, the nation. And so I want to share with you a little bit about what we do and try to answer that question uh, for you. But let me begin by just saying thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness uh, to give to Natchitoches Association and, and the, <clears throat> excuse me, the District, District 8 Baptist Convention as well as uh, to the cooperative program and other missions endeavors. It's because of your faithfulness that we can fulfill the calling God's put on our lives to do the ministry He's given us to do. I think uh, this cable will help me explain uh, a little bit about what we do and uh, if I were to tell you that this, this piece of cable uh, could hold a car, you probably would doubt me. Uh, Mike's standing over there and I think he's daring me to uh, go out there and hook my truck up to it and prove to it, but I'm not going to do that, Mike. Um, but if I, I just wanted to tease you with that idea that this cable is capable of holding uh, a car. And uh, so I want you to think about that and we'll come back to that in uh, just, just a few moments. Like I said, Lori and I have the opportunity to serve uh, our church here at First Baptist, along with about 120 other churches across West Central Louisiana, in what we call the District 8 Baptist Convention, where I serve as the coordinator of missions and ministries, and Lori serves as our uh, office assistant and office manager. And District 8 is a regional convention of churches, and so it's 120 uh, churches across uh, Sabine, Natchitoches, Red River, and DeSoto parishes, and uh, uh, about 120 churches where the average size is, is 65 people gathered together for worship on a Sunday morning and uh, when we're not under the quarantine rules. And uh, it's just a, a joyful place for us to serve. And uh, I want to share with you what we believe our mission is at District 8. Our, our mission at the District 8 Baptist Convention is to serve cooperating churches by assisting, uh, encouraging, and partnering with them to fulfill the Great Commission. And we envision that happening when the healthy churches are involved in missions, um, evangelistic outreach, and developing uh, mature disciples. And so if we go back to that idea that we're to, to help by assisting and encouraging uh, churches in fulfilling the Great Commission, I think we need to look at the Great Commission for a moment and just talk about what that is and be reminded of it. And so I want to share with you from Matthew 28 verses 18, 19, and 20, and then give you three really brief points so I can get to uh, what Brother Tommy's asked me to share today. Matthew 28 says this, and, and Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. If we think about that, the first thing we need to remember is that the Great Commission is based on Jesus' authority. We don't go out on our own authority. We don't go out in our own power or strength. Those of you who helped uh, last week deliver the blessing boxes, hopefully you experienced that. And you didn't go out just uh, as an individual or even as a member of a church, but you went out under the authority of Jesus to bless people with this tangible gift and give them an opportunity to receive the greatest gift, which is forgiveness uh, through Christ. And if we just did it in our own power, our own strength, our own authority, uh, we'd just be noise out there in the world. But when we go out in Jesus' authority, then we go out with a great mission to accomplish and with the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish that mission and with a purpose that's bigger than ourselves. And so we just need to be reminded that the Great Commission is based in Jesus' authority. Uh, secondly, I, I want us to think about this idea of making disciples. If, if we were sitting in a, a language class, they would tell us the only imperative in this whole passage is to make disciples. All the rest of it uh, magnifies that or explains that. And it's uh, as we're going about our daily life, our daily routine, the things that we do on a normal basis or the things that we're doing now during the, the quarantine time or as we begin phase one of reopening, those different things of our day-to-day our -day interactions 
is where the Great Commission is, is to be lived out. Not necessarily just in a, a one-week trip to some location to do missions or, or not even just one day a week at the local church, but the Great Commission is to be lived out every day um, as we're at the grocery store, as we're uh, working in the yard outside, as we're interacting with neighbors, as we're interacting with family. Uh, everywhere we are, just in our everyday life, we should be on mission. And how do we do that? We do that, as Brother Tommy said Sunday, talking about uh, salvation. You have the different phases of that or steps in that or uh, just the different realizations of it. And so there's that point of salvation when someone is baptized. And then you have process of discipleship or sanctification. And that's where the teaching comes in. And so Jesus tells us that as we're going, we make these disciples baptizing them and teaching them. So those are uh, all part of what all of us should be doing either through the local church or on a bigger uh, uh, purpose uh, in what God is calling us to do. And then I, I just want to remind us that uh, we start out in Jesus' authority. We do what He's asked us to do to baptize and to teach as we make disciples. And then He is with us every step of the way. I love that the book ends on this, begins with Jesus' authority and ends with His presence. As He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So when we go out, we're not alone. We are uh, doing it with Christ. Uh, we have come alongside Him in, in His mission, under His authority, making disciples of, of Him, not of us, and uh, out of that relationship that we have with Him. And uh, over the last few weeks, one thing that I've really come to realize is the, the value of, of relationships. Um, and certainly the challenge of isolation. You, you too probably have experienced that. Uh, as Brother Tommy said a moment ago, the, uh, the phones here have been ringing as people call to make those reservations. We're eager to get back together. We're eager to, to gather and worship. We're eager to get back to the things of, of what we would consider a normal life. And so there's a desire that we have to gather together for celebrations and birthdays and graduations. We, we long to gather together to comfort people when they're grieving and they're going through that loss uh, of a family member or a loved one. We really wish that we could gather together for the camaraderie out at the ballpark or some collective experience in a, in a theater. And true, we long to gather together as a church family to worship. I think that's a deep longing that, that all of us have. And in just these brief examples, we, we can understand the value of being together. And this value goes beyond just our life as individuals. It's true for our collective church experience and for our call to fulfill this great commission that Christ has given us. It's been said that we can do more together than we ever could alone. This phrase describes the heartbeat of Southern Baptist missions. It's what we call the cooperative program. And for those that are unfamiliar with the cooperative program, that's, uh, it's been around since 1925 where churches of the Southern Baptist Convention voluntarily give a portion of their offerings to the work of missions around the world. Uh, so 45,000 churches partner together on a voluntary basis. And right now we've got uh, over 3,600 missionaries engaging 900 different unique people groups across the world. People like Hartwell and Stephanie Rice uh, are included in those numbers of, of what's taking place. There's also uh, over 6,700 volunteer and paid missionaries here in North America uh, doing work as chaplains, uh, doing work uh, engaging uh, people in inner city communities and starting new churches and new works all across the United States. And I could spend more than my allotted time today talking about the cooperative program. So Brother Tommy, maybe there'll be an opportunity I can come back and, and share more about the cooperative program. But I want to change that statement that said uh, we can do more together than we could alone and tweak it a little bit for how I see it in District 8. Because here I believe it's that we can do together what none of us could do alone. Um, and some of what we do is, is just simply coming alongside a pastor when he feels alone. You know, the, the job of a pastor like Brother Tommy is never ending. When one sermon's finished and the invitation has been extended, Instantly, the cycle starts over to prepare another sermon, to hear from the Lord what needs to be said, to craft it into a message that connects with uh, the hearts of the congregation, uh, but still remain true to the text. Uh, empty the, pa the pastor has to empty himself of anything that would hinder him from the filling of the Holy Spirit. Um, all the while, he's walking through the valleys with the church family. He's going through the celebrations with the church family. He pours himself into the lives of the congregation. Um, and he's navigating his own family, and oftentimes a pastor is a father, and he's got children that he's discipling in his own home. And 
all while he's doing that, he's overseeing the, the day-to-day operations of the church, which is usually uh, rather simple, but in the recent days, it's been more complicated. How do you maintain a safe environment for worship? When's the right time to begin worshiping together? How does that look like? And, and the pastor's got all of this going on in his uh, personal life. And so we get to come alongside them and uh, just build a relationship with pastors, look for opportunities to encourage them. Uh, sometimes we're a shoulder for them to cry on, and sometimes we get to just uh, listen to them brag. And those are the times I really enjoy, just uh, sitting down with a pastor and saying, what's God been doing? And boy, it doesn't take long for them to just begin telling uh, all of what God's been doing in, in the life of their church. And, and they just get to celebrate that. And, and we get to come alongside them in that relationship with that pastor. And so a lot of what we do is one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationships with pastors. Some of what we do is uh, providing information. Uh, just yesterday, I had somebody text me. They didn't even know the name of a pastor in a certain church. They didn't know who was there at the time. And uh, over the weekend, I had a call. What, what's the phone number for this pastor? And so sometimes it feels a little bit like uh, we're, we're a human Google in relation to the church world, you know, uh, especially over the last two months. Uh, we've been working with the, the churches to explain what are the different requirements for reopening. What do we need to do? How would it look? We have facilitated some online meetings for pastors just to talk to each other about how they're handling the changes and the challenges. And uh, so we're just kind of behind the scenes encouraging and helping uh, the churches in that way. We also help connect individuals within the church. Uh, sometimes somebody's uh, a new Sunday school teacher and they, they don't know necessarily how to uh, begin preparing the lesson and and uh, they, they need somebody to kind of coach them or help them. So we might find somebody in another church that would help them and coach them along in that process if there's not somebody in their church. Or oftentimes it's a, a new vacation Bible school director who's never directed Bible school before. And, and, uh, and they, they don't have anybody in their church they can lean on. And so we help connect them with somebody in another church. And usually each spring we, we help uh, coordinate several vacation Bible school trainings across our area to help some of the smaller churches prepare for Bible school. Uh, so what we do is to assist pastors when they need to be out of, of the pulpit for a Sunday. They go on vacation and somebody's got to preach in their uh, absence. And so sometimes I, I get that opportunity, but we uh, maintain a list of pastors who are, are able and are ready to go out and preach on any given Sunday. And sometimes we get time to prepare for those. And sometimes uh, we get a call early that morning that a pastor's taken ill and not able to preach and they need somebody to, to fill in. And so um, we get to do that uh, on opportunities as they arise. And then uh, out of getting to know these pastors and working relationships with them, we, we discovered there was a need for um, a Christian counselor that we could help refer people to. And so for um, about three or four years ago, we partnered with the Louisiana Baptist Children's Home uh, Granbury Counseling Center. And there's a counselor that comes to our office once a week. And so pastors can refer people to that counselor when they need professional Christian counseling. Um, and I can tell you that that's a, a need that we've been excited to be able to offer um, because the, she stays booked up all day on the days that she is, is in our office. Uh, it's a true need that we're being able to see met. Um, and then we, we just, uh, one of the things I really enjoy about what we do is helping connect our pastors to other leaders. And about once a year, we're able to bring in a high quality leader from outside our area uh, to just pour into our pastors and give our pastors an opportunity to sit around the table and talk to these guys and hear from them and learn from them and, and truly uh, have some experiences and leadership uh, brought to our guys that uh, can help them strengthen the work of what they're doing. Um, we get to network churches together. Uh, just a week before everything came to a halt back in March, uh, we got to help uh, 43 churches in Sabine Parish work together for what they called Sabine 2020. It was a crusade event with an evangelist from Texas and uh, about a thousand people gathered in Manny High School's gym every night for four nights uh, to hear an evangelistic message and people responded and uh, was able, we were able to see God move through that. And, uh, and so we just help facilitate things like that, however we can assist the church in fulfilling the Great Commission. If, if I had to sum it up, I'd sum it up with, with two words that are very synonymous. One is connection and the other is partnership. So we, we try to make connections with individuals and churches and ministries, and we look for opportunities for partnership, to partner together to do what none of us could do alone. 
None of our churches could send 6,700 missionaries across North America or, or 3,000 missionaries across the world. None of our churches alone could uh, interact with 900 people groups uh, across the world. And right here locally, none of our churches could support the ministries that we do right here in our own backyard. And it's through the partnership of all the churches that we're able to accomplish these other ministries that I want to take just a minute to, to share with you. And don't worry, I hadn't forgotten about the, the cable here. I'm going to explain that in just a minute. Uh, stay with me. But uh, a couple of things that we do to partner together here locally is Clare Springs Baptist Camp, Toledo Bend Baptist Resort Ministries, and the Baptist Collegiate Ministries at Northwestern. Here at our church, I think we're pretty familiar with the BCM and what Bill and Phyllis do uh, out there. And uh, they're a ministry of district aid. Of course, Bill's employed by Louisiana Baptist, but the ministry budget that they have comes through the churches of district aid uh, to be able to minister to the students on Northwestern's campus. And uh, I was talking to someone in another part of the state, and they, they shared with me that Bill is kind of the go-to guy uh, on how to do Baptist Collegiate Ministry in Louisiana and that everybody's looking to him as a, a leader. And so you can be excited that we have him and Phyllis right here uh, in Natchitoches. But uh, also, I know that our college campus leans heavily on Bill. Uh, although he's not employed by, him, by the college, they, they depend on the ministry of the BCM at Northwestern, and we're able to help provide that uh, presence for the college staff and for the students uh, because of what you give to the cooperative program and to District 8. Another ministry that we partner together with is uh, Toledo Bend Baptist Resort Ministries out on Toledo Bend Lake. We employ two full-time missionaries that uh, travel up and down the lake. They uh, usually, when we're not in quarantine time, are hosting campground services each Sunday at, at about 10 different uh, campgrounds and marinas. Uh, they get pastors from all across our area to come and to preach in those uh, outdoor environments and, and try and engage people in a place of recreation where they can find the recreation of Christ in their lives. And uh, so those missionaries out there, Miss Mary Gore and Danny Warmack, uh, they're supported entirely by the, the gifts of the churches of uh, District 8. And so when you give to District 8 or to Natchitoches Association even, uh, a portion of that goes on to support those ministries. And each year, we're excited to hear how a child at a small church vacation Bible school assisted by Toledo Bend or an adult out in the lake environment uh, comes to know Christ as their Savior. And uh, you have a part in that because you partner with us in, at District 8. And then another one is the Clare Springs Baptist Camp, uh, where Bubba and Mandy Mills uh, serve as our camp managers. And normally, through the course of, of a year, uh, upwards of uh, six or 7,000 individuals will come across the, the campus at Clare Springs Camp. Normally, in the course of a year, more than 200 children and adults will give their lives to Christ through the ministries that take place at Clare Springs Camp. This year is a little different uh, with the quarantine, and we're examining how the camp uh, does the ministry God has given it, and I'm grateful for Bubba and Mandy and their desire to continue to minister despite the restrictions that, that have been placed and they're being creative and looking for ways uh, to minister. And so you can take pride in knowing that you're participating in that even, Clare Springs Baptist Camp, even on, if we don't send directly our children or youth to Clare Springs through the ministry of District 8, you're helping support uh, a campground environment right here where the Lord can meet uh, with children, youth, and adults. Uh, and change their lives. But there's more than just those things. I, I could go on and on about the, the different ministries, but just uh, real quickly, a couple of other things that we do is disaster relief. We help coordinate uh, the Southern Baptist disaster relief response in our area. We do chainsaw ministry where uh, if a tree falls on a home in a storm, we can go out and we've got men who, and women who are uh, trained uh, to uh, remove the tree from the home and put a temporary roof on it and, and secure the home. Uh, each year we have several uh, times that we do that right here locally in Natchitoches Parish where we go out and, and uh, help somebody who's had a tree uh, fall on their home. Uh, we also uh, have a, a shower unit. Uh, it's a mobile unit. It's got four individual shower stalls and we can sit, take that out and set it up uh, where these teams might be stationed. In, in 2016, uh, when the floods were coming through, we did a lot of flood recovery, and we used our shower unit then 
uh, here locally to uh, give volunteers an opportunity to get cleaned up at the end of the day. Uh, and many times they were sleeping on the floor of a, a gym or on a cot and we were able to provide a nice warm shower for them as they served in, in our community. Um, we also assist with compassion ministries and mission trips like the one uh, that our church goes on every year to Honduras. Uh, we help uh, individuals prepare to go on the trip and we sometimes help with uh, different aspects of the trip and sometimes it's just logistic things like uh, Brother Benji and I were talking earlier today about using a trailer to help transport some materials and so some of that is what we do just kind of uh, work behind the scenes to make sure that those mission trips happen. Several years ago we began organizing a mission trip to Puerto Rico. We have a pastor up in DeSoto Parish who's from Puerto Rico and following Hurricane Maria uh, his heart was broken for his homeland and so he asked if we would help put together a trip and uh, as of uh, the last trip we've had uh, nearly 50 individuals travel on four different trips uh, to Puerto Rico to serve not only with hurricane recovery but different uh, ministry aspects. And we brought a little bit of Puerto Rico back with us. Uh, we recruited a pastor uh, down there, not us directly, but one of our churches in District 8, and brought him back to minister to Hispanics here in, in Natchitoches uh, with a, a church that would speak Spanish. And so we were a partner in that ministry too. So we help get churches out on the mission field, and sometimes we help get uh, missionaries back here into our field. It's just all about those two words, partnership and connection. We just want to help connect people to ministry opportunities and partner together with existing ministry opportunities to give us all that opportunity to fulfill the Great Commission that we would, in our everyday lives, be active in sharing the gospel and, and leading others to Christ. I told you I'd come back to this, this cable in a minute and explain how this, this cable can hold up uh, a car. Uh, Actually, this, this cable, or one like it, doesn't hold up one car. It, it holds up 110,000 cars every day. But it's not this cable by itself. This cable is about the size of a, a pencil in diameter. And uh, according to uh, the hardware store, this, uh, this one piece of cable has a useful load of 750 pounds. Hardly enough to hold a car. That's, uh, you need five times that for most of our cars uh, to be held by it. So how can this hold 110,000 car, 110, cars a day? Well, nearly uh, 90 years ago, somebody came up with a bright plan and they began to, to uh, take cables this size and bundle them together. In fact, they bundled 27,572 cables like this together so tightly that uh, they made one large cable that was just over three feet in diameter. And they stretched that cable um, for about a mile and a half, so it was about 80,000 miles of, of cable like this stretched over a mile and a half that bridged the two sides of San Francisco Bay and became the Golden Gate Bridge. This cable alone can't hold one car, much less the traffic of one day on, on that bridge. But when it's bound together with 27,000 other cables that are just like it, uh, none of them capable of doing it in their own strength, but all of them, when they're working together, able to do something much bigger than themselves. That bridge has stood for almost 90 years, carried 110 or more thousand cars back and forth every day. It reminds me that's what happens when all of our churches bundle together whether it's through the local association like Natchitoches Association, a regional convention like the District 8 Baptist Convention, through the cooperative program in Louisiana Baptist or across the world as Southern Baptists, when we partner together, then we can accomplish more than we ever could alone. And I think now more than ever with the, the feelings of loneliness and isolation we felt over the last few months as we've been asked to self-quarantine and be isolated from those around us. I think more than ever we value that and we understand the value of being together. And so I'm excited about what God's about to do, what He's doing right now and what He's about to do as we uh, come back together as a church and as our churches come back together in associations and we take this value that we, we have uh, taken so highly over the last few months and let it propel us out into ministry. And then I know we'll continue to do all that God has asked us to do as we seek to fulfill the Great Commission. Thank you, Brother Tommy, for the opportunity to share about District 8. And uh, share one last word. All right.
Just wanted to remind everybody that tomorrow, thank you, Ron, I appreciate that, and uh, I appreciate all the work you and Lori do and, uh, and your heart for helping the churches and helping me and helping other pastors. Tomorrow at 9.30 till noon, we're putting together some more blessing boxes, and so I want to encourage you if you feel comfortable and you feel uh, as though you can come and help, if you'd like to come and help, uh, from 9.30 till noon tomorrow, Thursday, uh, we're, we'll be putting together some more blessing boxes. We've, had, we've got some more supplies that, uh, that have been left over, and uh, there are people that are requesting those boxes, and so uh, feel free to come and, uh, and help out. And don't forget, uh, this week, if you'd like to be here this Sunday, as long as we have available space, call and make a reservation for your family. And, uh, and based on how big of a response we have, We'll determine next week how many services uh, we'll put together. But uh, we're looking forward to seeing the church back together. And uh, be here tomorrow if you can. Okay? You want to pray for us? Yeah. Let's go. Heavenly Father, we thank you that um, we are beginning to gather together. We thank you that uh, the desire of our hearts is being accomplished as we gather together for worship on Sunday. And Lord, I thank you for our church. I thank you for the heartbeat of Brother Tommy and our staff. I thank you for the way they have worked so hard to keep us connected and engaged in the ministry. And so, Father, I ask that you would bless them. And Father, I ask that you would uh, quickly remove this coronavirus from uh, uh, us and from our midst, that we would be able to not go back to normal, but Father, that we would be able to engage our community with the gospel of Christ and uh, do so with excitement and joy. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.